Welcome to another episode of the UX Portfolio series. In this video, I'm going to respond to one of the requests from the audience, how to implement short phrases to point out key ideas. So today I'm gonna to go through some simple tips, techniques on copywriting for your UX project presentation, such that your UX portfolio can shine on its own without an alarming amount of text. Thank you, Cindy, for suggesting this topic, and also thank Calvin for letting me use his UX project to do the demo. More on that later. And now, let's get started and roll the intro. Morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. The goal of this video is very simple, to write better copies. More precisely, write more concise copies and use a lot less text in your UX portfolio. So I'm gonna set your mind straight first on how to approach copies, how you might want to see it so that it can actually benefit your own UX portfolio instead of confusing your audience, making it worse, overwhelming recruiters and hiring managers. And I'm gonna show you some great examples that you can emulate slash learn from, followed by demos on writing a couple of short phrases for Kevin's UX project. Don't forget to stick around till the end for the bonus content. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Number one, the role of copies or text in general in your UX portfolio. So let me just get this into your head first. The natures of any text copy you wanna put in your UX project is supplementary, okay? Supplementary. The ultimate project is that you don't need any words at all. Imagine a project presentation without any text, but it's so straightforward, so simple, so intuitive, and it solves the problem in a creative, clever way. That is the ultimate UX project you're aiming for. But of course, this is a very ideal case. Most of the time, you're gonna have some copy or you might need a few words, just a few words, to help bridge the gap a little bit between your mockups or animations or images to the actual concept. And that's actually pretty much it. But again, text is supplementary. If we have a hierarchy of importance in a content type, I will rank animation first because it can be more information within the shortest amount of time. And then the images, aka your mockups, your visual polish, your treatment, the way you present your project, maybe charts, diagrams, and then text. And of course, some of the information or the concept you want to tell, you cannot really convey with animations or images, then that's the right time and actually perfect time to use text. And in that scenario, I would say you have to use text. I would recommend, I would advocate, I would root for you to use text. But to be honest with you, most of the time, you're not gonna run into that issue. So how does it work? Basically, you can use five or less words in the title, for example, to get the idea across, to convey your concept, to facilitate the understanding of your design concept that some of your animations or images cannot deliver, to help explain better how your design decisions, design features, the actual design that you developed, how do those solve users' problems, or how would those benefit users in any way. So what do you do? Here's a quick summary of how I would take this. You can write more and then pick from there. You can totally write more and it's okay to write a lot for reference later because in that case, you are the user for your own writing. For example, later on you have an interview for an internship or your first design full-time job. You wanna go through the process, the evolution of your projects, your process of project, then when you have a lot of writing on the side as notes, it helps refresh your memory. It helps get you back into the, into the mode of talking through the project. However, what goes inside your portfolio is a completely different story. Because in that scenario, the actual users, the end users are not you. They are recruiters and hiring managers. For them, there are not a lot of time to go through every single words of your paragraph or your description. So the less words, the better. The more time you save them to understand your idea, the better. That's exactly the reason I do not recommend a lot of text. I know it might be tempting to write a lot or you think you need to write a lot to explain your concepts. I have been through there. I know exactly how you feel. And in fact, you don't need to and you shouldn't have that much text to support your concepts. If your images and animations don't convey the concept, then it's not the copywriting problem. The, no matter how much text you write, it doesn't matter at this moment. Because what you need to work on is actually the images and the animations themselves, how those assets convey your concept. 
and here's a mini framework that I noticed or I know or I have used it before. You can start with adjectives and then a few lines, maybe three lines of short captions, or you can start with a phrase and then caption, or start with verbs, more actionable, it feels like active, and then caption. You can start with these three. There are of course more to explore, but if you don't know what to do, just pick one of these and get your project going. And that is actually a perfect segue to number two. References, resources, where can you emulate or learn from? I'm gonna show you three places, three very design-driven companies, Apple, Pinterest, and Airbnb. I'll have the link in the comment section down below, so feel free to check it out, rewind, look at the specifics if you need to. First up, we have apple.com iOS 15 preview. And a lot of the copies they have are actually pretty straightforward and simple to describe this particular feature on their new iOS update. For example, let's say, okay, introducing share play. Okay, so this is the title. One word, one word, two words. Share play becomes their own brand word. So two words there. Introducing share play. So share play is the new feature that they have, as you can see. In the photo, the hand holding the phone, the share play is, let's say, let's not read any of the text. Share play, share and play, so there's the Apple TV playing in the background as a picture in picture view. So share play, you share the play with other people, right? So the image itself is quite actually explanatory. But then saying introducing share play, it makes the statement stronger. That's the feature that you're introducing and this brings benefit to users. Uh, entirely new way to explain with friends and family is about sharing. So, you, so it provides and offers this new experience that you can bond with your family and friends, even though they're far away. And we can look at other things, right? Uh, listen together, which is like share play, but it's listening together. And I will actually say, the copy that they have uh, are getting longer. I remember the ones from maybe I was ten or eleven. They are shorter and they have bigger text. Uh, but again, compare this. For example, to what you have. Do you have more text? Do you have less text? Uh, is it as concise? That is your is your title as concise as just two words? Listen together, share your screen, watch together, or you have longer things. How do you write a copy? So if you notice, get together and listen to an album. So it starts with a verb. This is not even a complete sentence, and actually you don't need to. This is supposed to be something more catchy, a catchphrase or phrases that grab your attention, take you directly to the action, to the feature, to highlight the key point of this design, which is listen together. You have the Apple Music playing, and then you have a picture-in-picture -picture window looking at your friends and family's face. Um, spatial audio, uh, even if you just look at the animation, you have a lot of different people, and then you have that sound wave animation moving, uh, and then spatial audio, right? And individual voices sound like they're coming from the direction so you get the idea so that is iOS 15 iOS 14 also have something similar uh, and they might be even shorter so if you look at this this is the combination that I like you have an animation playing on one side right app library and then you call out as a title what this is this is an app library so you swipe left you get the whole thing so the caption you have concisely describe what your design feature is about. How does that bring value to the user? So the value is your most used app are just one tab away, right? Making things simpler, more efficient. One tab away instead of two tabs, three tab, five tabs away. Well, look at how big this text is. Look at this, unlock your iPhone with your Apple Watch while wearing a mask. Look at how big this text is. And they can use this such a gigantic font size because they don't have a lot of words. There's only a few words there. It directly addresses the issue that Face ID won't work with mask, but now you can unlock your phone with your watch. Problem solved. Next, let's take a look at Pinterest. So Pinterest has a website, has a website newsroom that they publish some of their latest update or upgrade on their app. So in this one, like the best offline shopping, bring it online. So this is apparently about shopping. So let's see what feature that they have incorporated into the apps to make shopping easier, more fun, or anything on that on that line, okay? Well, as you can see, text on one side, image on the other side. So the text is describing the images. Let's just look at the images. Let's take a look at the images and guess what the text will be saying. So uh, there's a call out, shop all your saved products in one place. So I'm guessing this is gonna be talking about the shopping list and yes shopping list new there's something new that they have and the text i think this is a little too much but it makes sense 
It makes sense only because this is newsroom, it's news. News is facing the public. The public or the investors, Wall Street, those are target users. So it makes sense to be this long to have more keywords in there for them to look at. Again, the target users are not recruiters or hiring managers. So they can do it in a longer fashion that we don't. Our portfolios are recruiters and hiring managers facing. So we need to cut down our captions as much as we could. But the idea is very similar. The title is the same, right? Two words, three words, let's say. Shopping, list, new. Next one is shop from search. So there's a search screen. You can shop from the search screen. Straightforward, right? This one, shop with lens. So lens is the camera search. And proudly, I have worked on this feature. Um, and now it's become shop with lens. It's a new feature that they released. Pretty cool. Uh, shop from pins, product pins. As you can see, the titles is extremely concise. Just by looking at the title and the image, you can already see the connection between them and what you're supposed to be highlighting, right? So this is one of the pins and you can see some uh, floating pills on the top of a pin. And then you can shop directly from there. So three, four, right? So that's a new feature that makes shopping pretty easy for uh, users who use Pinterest. So last one, Airbnb, this is by far my favorite. I have to emphasize, repeat again, this is by far my favorite. Airbnb 2021. So they have done a great job, incredibly well done job in writing copies. Look at how few words there are describing each feature. Even the caption is only two lines. I think this is perfect. This is great. I will totally take a look and extrapolate the essence from it and then work on your copies from this. So let's look at just these three great examples. Flexible destinations, flexible matching, flexible dates. Three titles, two words only in each. And the first word, they are all the same. So that actually group everything together as a feature bundle, which is exactly what they're going for. Flexibility. In what way? In the destination, in the matching, in the date. In this one, you have one and a half images and on the top, you have the, the tab group selection, treehouse, boat, cabin. So there are different places you can stay. So, okay, yeah, flexible destination. So a new way for guests to discover. So it helps users to discover offers a new way to do so. So that's a value we bring to users. Don't write long sentences or random things in your copy. Just to highlight what this is, it's a new way, and what does it help users? What value does your design feature help users? So next, matching a list that lies just outside of a specific search, okay? Uh, show more guests more options, okay? So for example, if you look at this, uh, it crosses out the price under 220. It's just a little bit above. This is just a little bit above 236. Uh, missing pool, no hot tub, but still um, within most of your criteria or your filters. So, factual matching offer you more options. That's the values that it brings. Maybe you don't mind missing just a few uh, filters. Flexible dates, okay? Again, more options give you more flexibility, right? I'm flexible. You can do weekend, week, month, different months. Again, I have a link in the description. There are more writing to, to learn from, to look at. Right, look at all these. One line title, two line descriptions. Look at how consistent and how simple, how minimum it is. It's, it's amazing. Now take a look at it and see what you learn and then apply them to your next iteration on your copywriting. So what do you think? Does that make sense? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The TLDR is that you can totally have a lot of text to describe your thought process and the evolution of the design. But what you show on your website should be concise and even minimal, just enough to highlight the key points and grab your audience's attention. Now, as you know, it's a time for bonus content. Bonus content. I'm more than happy to take a look at your portfolio and give you some feedback specifically on feature coil copywriting in your UX project. All you have to do is one smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your portfolio link to my email, which you can find on the about page in my channel. Make sure to leave your YouTube username there so that I know you have left a comment. And then I'll take a look at your portfolio, give you some feedback on copywriting and a shout out in the next video. Good luck to you all on your next design portfolio iteration, UX internships, and full-time jobs.
that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a very small channel, so every like counts, and I will greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers! Thank you.